Hey, Tim, good to see you. What's up, Mike? We know that you like guys uh, with chips on their shoulders. Um, so w w what was it that, that spoke to you about, um, about Bones, and why were you guys so excited to get him? Just an intense passion for the game. Um, I talked to a, a really smart um, college coach today, um, and, and he told me something stuck with me. Some guy, the three L's, he said some guys um, what, live it, wait, like it, love it, or live it. And I think this guy is – so he lives it. Um, so, you know, he just has an infectious energy. It's not unique to the basketball court. It's, it's you walk in a room with him, the guy uh, puts a smile on your face. Uh, certainly his ability to play both guard positions. He's got um, um, endless range. He's got a creative offensive game. Um, and he just loves to play ball. You know, he's a, he's a hooper. And we've tend to have, um, we've had some good luck with those type of guys. And uh, we're excited to have him. Harrison Wynn, DNVR. Hey, Tim, good to see you. Uh, Bones was talking about the, the pre-draft interview he had with you guys and how he just <laughs> really felt a connection. Um, can, can you take us inside that pre-draft interview as much as you can? And um, I, I guess, did you feel that connection with him also? You know, when we talk to these guys, I mean, it can't be easy. You know, you walk in a room, five, six, seven adults, and we know everything about them. So we try to make it as casual and, and informal as possible to let them uh, relax and also get to know us. Um, so he, he walked in and we told him to kind of relax and he, he certainly relaxed. Um, he made himself right at home. I think he gave us a couple of verses uh, of a, a recent song. I don't, I don't know if it's released yet, but he gave us a couple of verses on a song he was working on. Um, and it was very, you know, it was very natural. We talked to him again two days ago on um, a Zoom call. Um, Again, we, we, we felt like uh, energetically and culturally, he's a guy that really fits kind of who we are. Alex Labadoo, Nuggets.com. Uh, hey, Tim, I was curious what you thought of draft night as a whole, your experience with it, and some of the moves that had gone through, that had gone on throughout the night. It was um, really confusing. There were so many moves. Um, there was so much movement. I'm still, we just kind of finished the board trying to figure out who's where, what players. Um, ended up with which teams. Um, it's a fun night. It, it was a, like this was not an ideal draft year. Didn't get to see most of these guys play in person. Um, limited interaction, even with the workout process. We weren't able to bring as many guys in as we generally would. Um, so it was challenging. Um, you know, hopefully there's, there's somewhat of return to normalcy as we approach next season. Um, but as always, it's fun. It's, it's a really enjoyable night. Um, you know, my title says one thing, but I just re really, really enjoy scouting these players, getting to know them, um, trying to see what could potentially can make our team better. So um, it's always a blast. Vinny Benedetto, Denver Gazette. Hey, Tim, I know there's a lot of things that still kind of have to be determined and, and figured out, but if, if things shake the right way, is, is Bones a guy you can see contributing as a rookie, or is there, is there anything kind of developmentally planned for him at this point? Yeah, I think that's up to Mo and his staff. Uh, you know, he does some things that potentially could translate, but we don't want to put any undue responsibility or expectations on him. Um, we're, we're a very good team with a lot of depth um, at those positions. Um, you know, I, I think our coaching staff is the best in the NBA. They do a fantastic job developing the guys. So, We'll get him in the gym and, and see what he can and cannot do and, and go from there. Michael Kelly, Associated Press. Yeah, Tim, um, was Bones a guy that you had targeted knowing that you were going to be at 26? But did you also explore moving up or moving down uh, based on if he was still available? Yeah, you know, you have a million conversations. Most of them lead to nothing. But he, he was a guy throughout the process we had circled um, again we thought his ability to create his own shot to play on and off the ball as a freshman play primarily on the ball he's got great length you know shade over six nine wingspan um, and again I've said it a couple times but um, his personality and his passion for the game and life is something that really appealed to us Ryan Blackburn Denver Stiffs hey Tim is there anything uh that stands out in Bones's game uh, that if it's just the one thing that he, he adds to it, that you feel like he could really surprise a lot of people that he could outperform his draft position and really be a big hit. 
Well, I mean, he's he's got a nose for scoring the ball. Um, he's got, um, you know, in the arena range, got extremely deep range. He's one of the better shooters we saw in this draft. Um, and he's got a flexibility and creativity in this game that's um, you know, not super common right now. Um, I think he, you know, he's a guy that you can tell that grew up playing on playgrounds and playing a lot of basketball, you know, one-on-one, two-on-two, three-on-three. So, um, you know, he's got a whole, a whole lot of things he brings to the table. And it'll be fun to see, you know, how he develops and how we can help him achieve um, his vast potential. We'll go back to Harrison Wynn, DNVR. Tim, when you look ahead to free agency, what kind of things are you going to be looking for in terms of how you kind of round out uh, this rotation, whether it be offense, defense? How do you want to complete this rotation ahead of next season? Uh, I want to be healthy. That's number one. If we get that done, it'd be awesome. Um, uh, we'll see, you know, we constantly sit down um, as a staff um, with Mo and his staff. You know, wh where do we have weaknesses? Can we address those weaknesses? Um, well, I think we got a bunch of guys that, that are free that we'd like to bring back. Keep our fingers crossed. We'll bring back as many of those guys <laughs> as we can. Um, we thought um, prior to the injuries, we had a pretty complete team. You know, we like our core. We like um, we like the pulse of a locker room. We like the competitive spirit. Um, so um, you know we'll be pretty picky when we're looking at the type of guys we're going to add to that mix. Mike Singer, Denver Post. Hey Tim, you just said you know you got you liked the team prior to the injuries. Is it the kind of thing where not a lot has to change? Where you feel like you know bringing the majority of the guys back will kind of get you back to where you guys were assuming health in X amount of months. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, I talked to, um, it was funny. I was talking to Jamal and you pick your brains and some of your vets about what you can add. And he was like, it's pretty easy. We just need uh, health. Um, you know, you can't control health obviously. And, and that can't be the only answer, but I do think there's a collective belief amongst uh, our locker room, amongst our, basketball operations from coaches in front office that, you know, we have a, a pretty complete team. We can always get better. We'll always look for ways to, to um, improve. But um, I think at, at the heart, uh, we like what we have and um, how can we improve on that? We'll see in the coming days. But, um, you know, we have a, a lot of good players and, and a lot of really, really good guys. And then just to follow up on that, you mentioned Jamal. Um, do you have an update on him? How, how's he doing uh, with his rehab? Um, he's doing great. You know, he's, he's been attacking rehab like we thought he would. He's, he's you know, he's such a tough-minded guy. Um, you know, he's chomping at the bit. We're, we've got to slow him down. So, you know, there's no rushing this injury, but he's doing fantastic. Um, I'm really proud of how aggressively he's, um, you know, attacked his rehab this far. Brandon Cristal, KOA. Hey, Tim, how's it going? Uh, I'm, I'm curious, with Summer League coming up, what do you expect guys like Bones and Marcus Howard to, to do? What, what can you get out of that when you've got such a veteran team and not a lot of, you know, I guess, spots to, to even use young guys? What, how, how do you use that? Well, it's great. I mean, to talk about Marcus. He didn't have the benefit of Summer League last year. Um, It'll be great for um, you know some some of our guys. Um, you know, Zeke didn't have the benefit of summer league, so have a more traditional summer. Um, they've been in the gym a ton. Um, you know, Zeke and Marcus are workaholics, so it's fun to get out there and kind of play and, and be more the focal point than generally you are during the regular season. It's a great chance to continue to grow, and it's always a fun week. So, um, you know, we're excited to see what they can do and um, just go out there and compete against kind of their peer group. Mike Singer, Denver Post. To follow up on that, um, is Bowl going to participate in Summer League? Um, and if yes or if not, what's kind of his path forward uh, in terms of finding something more sustainable in the rotation next season? Yeah, he's got a couple a couple options. So uh, potentially we can see him in Vegas. You know, the more he plays, the better. I think with, as, as Mo oftentimes says, the best, the best teacher is, is time. So the more competitive basketball all our young guys can get, uh, the, the better off they'll be, um, you know, the, the dust will settle from, um, from the draft. We'll quickly hit free agency and then we'll, we'll kind of get a good sense of who from our, uh, from our president roster will play summer league. We'll go back to Brandon Cristal, KOA Denver. 
I guess I want to go off the board a little. You know, I think Commissioner Silver said he's eager to get back to a regular schedule or, or the same schedule. But there's plenty of people that enjoyed watching basketball well into July and, and have it kind of featured where it was. Do you have an opinion one way or the other? Because I guess once things change, they change. I mean, just because you always did something the same. I mean, people used to smoke on airplanes and they don't anymore. So, you know, sometimes new things can be better. I'm no smoking on airplanes and I am a hard no on doing this on July 29th. Um, you know, it's been, um, it's been a, a, a pretty aggressive last um, 19 months. Um, you know, I know it's, we've got a great staff. These guys are tired. Um, I think we, we'd all, they'd all welcome a, a bit of a reprieve from um, what has been pretty much a, a nonstop two year period. So um, whatever's good for the league will support. Um, but you know, speaking solely for myself and my family, it's be nice to just kind of get away a little bit with the kids and wife and um, you know, turn, turn the phone off. All right, we got time for one last one. We're going to go back to Brandon Cristal. Yeah, I, I just found out. I'm saying if you start in December, then the whole calendar shifts, not year to year, you know, jacking with it, but you get the same normal break. You just push it back and you start later and finish it. No, I know. I'm just saying we haven't had a break in a couple of years. So at this sure. moment, that doesn't sound <laughs> – I understand the dynamics. I understand – I, I get how the 12-month calendar works. <laughs> um, and, again, if it's good for the league, we're all for it. I'm just saying that at this very moment, um, doesn't sound too awesome. All right, that'll do it. Thanks for sitting down with us, Tim. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.